We have a special video for you. We are literally gonna cover everything you need to launch your SMA, to find clients, to outreach to them, to actually do sales and even deliver so that you could build a real business, build a successful SMA business. Everything I share with you are gonna be the exact principles that have helped me and my business partner do over $25 million in sales. And I promise you, you will get some value. So get your notepad out, get your pen, and let's jump into it. Awesome, Nick. So. We know now how to start an SMMA. We know what it takes and what to do to have a profitable SMMA. But now people wanna know, do you recommend doing live calls for SMMA to get some clients? Okay, so the biggest problem that people will have when they start any business is gonna be sales. So sales and this whole topic that we're gonna talk about right now is the, gonna be the thing that makes or breaks you, okay? So when you're talking about making sales calls or presentations, which is where you actually show people what you do, you want to be prepared. You want to have a script. You want to have a playbook that you operate off of. For me, when I was growing up, I was extremely introverted. I didn't necessarily go out there and just say hi to strangers. I also would get really sweaty hands. I would get really dry mouth. I would have all of these problems when I first got into doing any type of sales. So that's okay. And that's completely normal. All of that will eventually be fixed when you can go ahead and know exactly what to say and what the process is, and you can understand why you're saying it. And I will give you a lot of confidence. So the question is this, does it make sense for people to do calls, maybe do sales calls or cold calls with SMA? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. And here's the thing is this, if you lead with service, and you have that intention when you call someone, it's going to make it a lot easier. So don't think about trying to sell them. Just think about, Hey, I want to go ahead and get in contact with this business owner. I want to see if they have attention on social media. I want to see if they want to grow on it. And I want to see if I'm maybe the guy, I'm maybe the girl that can help them. And then when you do that, it's going to open up a lot of doors, but it's also going to make the call not so scary because your intention is to help them. It's to serve them. It's to actually show them opportunity that can help their business grow, which will help their family will help their employees. And that's really the thing you have to get sold on is, there's businesses out there where people are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. They're not using social media. You could be that person that helps their business survive. If you don't do it, they will go out of business. Literally that happens every single day, every single year. Thousands of businesses go out of business every single month. Millions go out of business every single year. And you could be that person that actually saves their business. So when we talk about doing calls, we want to go in with a structure and have a game plan. Amazing. So now we know that we have to have a game plan and a certain structure. And also people really want to know, you know, how can you get a huge pipeline of SMMA calls to make or have clients? The thing that really comes down to is having a really big pipeline and a lot of sales calls that are actually, you know, happening so that you get enough opportunities, you get enough at bats. And what I mean by pipeline is this. There's actually a formula. If you want to make $10,000 a month in your business, you should have $40,000 in deals that are supposed to close. And if you can focus on that, meaning this, let's just say everybody that you work with pays you two grand. Well, you want to make $10,000 a month. You should have five people that say, Hey, I'm going to do business with you. And those people are qualified. They could actually afford to pay 2000 bucks. What you want to do is you want to go for four times that amount. So rather than five, you have 20 people that say, I want to work with you. I intend on working with you. And they run a business that could actually pay you $2,000. So that's the whole name of the game. And this is how it works is you want to know your numbers. So for me, what I like to tell my sales guys is look, man, you want to make 10 K a month. We should make a plan for you to make 40 K a month and worst case scenario, you're going to make 10 grand and you know, the numbers. So the next number that you have to know is this, how many people do you have to talk to, to get an appointment? Okay. And what that means is this, if you have to talk to 20 business owners to get someone to say yes to an appointment, well, now you know that number. So now the next question is this, how many appointments do you have to set to do a presentation? Let's just say you have to do two appointments to get a real presentation, meaning they show up. Okay, good. So now I need to go ahead and actually do two appointments to get one person to show up. How many people do I need to actually talk to and do a presentation to do a deal? Well, let's just say you need to speak to 10. So what that means is this, 
you have to do 10 presentations to get somebody to do a deal with you. You need to go and do 20 appointments to do a deal. You need to go and do 20 appointments, whatever it is. Let's just say that it's 10 calls to get an appointment. You need to do 200 calls to get a deal. You see all the numbers, you know, they work backwards and they work forwards and you can connect the dots and figure out exactly how many people you have to talk to to get a deal done and you should know that numbers. And once you figure that out, it's simple math. And then what I did was this, is I knew, hey, we need to talk to 10 business owners to set five appointments, okay? Once we set five appointments, we know that three or four out of the five are gonna show up. And for every five people that show up, we're gonna do one deal. So what I did was, is I hired 15 people to set appointments. And those 15 people, would have you know two people show up a day, and I knew that, hey, if I can get my guy in front of, my guy doing deals in front of four people, four to five people every single day, he's gonna do a deal every day. We're gonna get a new client every day with that sales rep. And that same principle applies to you as an individual. And then once you know your numbers, it's just math. And the goal is this though, you wanna know the math, but you also wanna know where you're at so you can improve your conversion rates. And I'll give you an example. I had a sales rep that I was training and when he first got started, he, his job before was he was working minimum wage at a music uh, store and he was sleeping on a couch that was 400 bucks a month and he was just really in a bad spot, the lowest point in his life. He was 31 years old and you know, fast forward, he got a little bit better at setting appointments. And when he first started, he used to talk to 15 people to get one person to say yes to an appointment. Then it was 10 people to get two people to say yes to an appointment. Then it was five people to get three appointments. And then as time went on, it was like he needed to set five appointments to get two people to show up. And then it was like four appointments to get two people to show up. And then it was three appointments to get two people to show up and his skill increased. So he had more efficiency. So once you know your numbers and you know exactly what it takes for you to get a deal, then you can work on the skill set part to get better and improve those ratios so that, you know, Hey, I don't need to talk to 20 people to get a deal. I only need to talk to five or 10. And that's, that's basically the real key to success with doing sales in any industry, but specifically this one right here. Amazing. Yes. You know, with you saying appointment setting and having all these sales callers, you know, the future is here now, you know, people want to know, do you recommend AI phone callers or do you even recommend AI to begin with? For right now, most people getting started, they're not gonna use AI to set appointments. Right now, we don't use AI to set full appointments. We use AI to confirm appointments and do confirmation calls. And for those of you that are just getting started, when you're looking at sales, it is like an art and there's so many different things and parts of the process to make it work. And one part of the process is what we call a confirmation call. And when you set an appointment, basically the guy says, hey, I'm gonna be there tomorrow at three o'clock you have the steps to confirm that appointment the day of. So we'll use AI for that. Altogether though, the really cool thing about AI though is you can use it to go ahead and um, test things and, and get a lot of alpha out there. But right now you're gonna get a better result by actually doing it with a human. And if you're just getting started in this and you're just starting, you wanna be the one to make the initial calls and at least have an idea of how to do it so that down the road, when you eventually get it down, you could have a team member come in and do that and you could actually give them real coaching and feedback. That's the important part. For me, I never wanted to do sales. I never got excited about doing sales. I learned sales so that I could get so good at it that I never had to do sales again. And what I mean by that is this, I know every single part of sales. I know the whole process from A to Z, exactly what should be done, how it should be done, what would be the mistakes. And I know that because now I can coach people on sales, you see? So really, you know, when you're getting into this, the other beautiful part about it is when you master sales, you could apply it to other industries and other businesses that you do down the road as well. Awesome, awesome. You know, with all the viewers, with the questions we have, you know, all of them, what they're saying right now is, with all this you shared, what's one tip you could share to revolutionize calls and closing? So the biggest tip that I could share in terms of doing more deals is to have a specific script for appointment setting, have a specific script for discovery calls, have a specific script 
for actually doing the deal. And you know, in each of those scripts, there should be a few key points. In the appointment setting script, you wanna make sure that you have your introduction, you wanna make sure that you have your elevator pitch, you wanna make sure that you have your fact finding questions so you can get to know the business owner, where he's at now, where he wants to go, what his biggest challenge is, what's the biggest problem he's trying to solve. You wanna also have a, a section called the lockdown where you actually get the appointment scheduled and make sure that you, know, you have that locked in in the calendar with all the best protocols. And then the discovery script, you wanna expand and make sure that the person is really qualified, but also pre-frame them in a way to make sure that on the next call, you get all the decision makers and that they're actually showing up ready to do a deal. Okay. And you still will have additional fact finding questions to really get to know their business, to see exactly where you can help them. But it's a chance to also build a dip, deeper connection and really build some rapport and um, a relationship with the person that you might be doing business with. And then in the closing script and that whole process right there, you do want to still have the basic components of a sales call to close a deal where you would do a greeting, you would do clarification, fact finding questions, and you would do a lockdown before you go into the demo, where in the demo, you want to make sure that you're adjusting it and making that product communicate it in a way that makes it real for the client where you're talking about examples of how that could really serve them. And then last but not least, you want to have written down the ways that you're going to handle the objections because the objections will come in sales. It's a part of the process and a part of the game. So that would be the main tip is like have the words down that you know you're going to say so that when you're there with your client, you're not thinking about what to say. You're just following a proven process and system to get the results you want. Nick, now people want to know how could you sell pitch for SMMA? So when you're jumping into SMMA, a lot of people want to know like, dude, how do you pitch yourself? And you know, what's that really look like? Because sometimes it can be weird being the founder and also sell yourself. Right. And what, what I really feel like it comes down to is this, you want to get passionate about your doing, even if you don't know how to do all the technical details, you need to know the statistics, know the numbers, be a professional. So for example, if I'm going in and I'm talking about businesses and marketing, know the statistics about marketing and business specifically related to the service that you're selling. Go in there and be passionate, do research on the company, do research on the competitors, come with examples of what their competitors are doing and what they should be doing on their end to get more business. And if you could do that, you won't even have to sell yourself. You'll be selling yourself just by being a professional and them seeing that they're working with a professional and them knowing that their business is going to be in really good hands. Yes, very true. You know, people want to know, you know, we know that you've built multi-million dollar companies with SMMA and even partnered with a lot of people doing amazing in SMMA, but people want to maybe see you um, or relate to you in a more like a beginner stage. Do you remember what your first SMMA call looked like? Yeah, so the first call that I ever made was from a cold call. And the first one that I remember was I called a guy that ran a billion dollar company and that was my first call. I figured I should go big. And uh, that was the first call um, where I actually got a hold of someone. I set an appointment and uh, I did a deal completely on my own. Before that, I did do other deals with someone, but I was, I was actually you know getting help and still learning the business. So with that being said, I, I did that full process by myself. So that was the first call I did where it was from beginning to end. 